Often when I speak, the press want to talk about the tragedy of the day. They want to talk about terrorism. They want to talk about weapons of mass destruction. They want to talk about emerging infections. I was at a press conference a couple of years ago, and no matter what the press conference was about, the second question would always be something about a terrorist, something about a bomb, something about chemical warfare. So one reporter one day made a mistake in a room filled like this and said to me, Surgeon General, what's the most pressing issue before you today? And I said, obesity. The room was silent. None of them knew what to ask. And I said to them, they said, why do you say that? I said, because obesity is the terror within. It is destroying us, destroying our society from within. And unless we do something about it, the magnitude of the dilemma will dwarf 9-11 or any other terrorist event that you can point out to me. So this is a terror from within. It's destroying us. Well, I have the pleasure today to be with Walter Willett, who's a professor at Harvard Medical School. And Dr. Willett, Professor Willett, both of those, I would imagine. Right. And you are a world's leading expert on geri obesity, and you've got some very interesting comments. What is geri obesity? As we look at our population, we see the whole population has been getting fatter over the last 30 or 40 years, and now that generation is moving into the geriatric group. And so we have a an older population that is much more obese than it was 30 or 40 years ago. And of course what we see is that people are starting to pay the price of that uh, big increase in obesity. Uh, the price is more diabetes, more cardiovascular disease, more arthritis, uh, many more cancers. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge health price and uh, also a price in feeling of well-being and, and happiness. We actually see a decline in those factors with a greater obesity. You know, there's some surprising uh, just maps mm -hmm. of the United States as far mm -hmm. as this uh, cutting across swaths of our country, mm -hmm. um, increasing this problem, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, all parts of the country are increasing in terms of obesity, but it's not equal across the country. There's this big swath down the middle of the country. I'm from the Midwest, and I go back there, and you don't need data. People are, are fat in the Midwest, and that uh, gets even worse as you go down uh, the middle part of the country and the south and southeast part of this. the U.S. is particularly obese. Uh, not everybody there, but the rates of obesity are much higher than, say, in the Northeast. And also, that showing up in terms of mortality now, too, that for the first time in history that where we have data, life expectancy is actually going down in many parts of the South and Southeastern United States. For our country, how, how dramatic to have right. those types of declines now. Yeah, and that's, that's like the first time in history or our recent history, Since isn't we've it? actually had good data, it's the first time in the United States we've actually been seeing life expectancy mm -hmm. go down. Down. Uh, and that's despite huge progress in um, medicine and uh, science and, un and understanding of human biology, uh, but uh, the obesity epidemic is just overriding the advances in modern medicine. I mean, most of our viewers are older who are watching or who care for older individuals, uh, but I have seen the, you know, the national magazines of mm -hmm. obesity being such an enormous problem mm -hmm. among our youth. Mm -hmm. um, so does it cut across all age factors? The problem in obesity in children is getting a lot of press and attention, and that's good, that's important, because it's a huge problem. Before coming to the White House, the President and I lived lives like most families. Two working parents, I was busy trying to maintain uh, some balance, picking kids up from school, trying to get things done at work, just too busy, not enough time. And what I found myself doing was probably making up for it and being unable to cook a good meal for my kids. Going to fast food a little more than I'd like, uh, ordering pizza, and I started to see the effects on my family, particularly my kids. It got to the point where our pediatrician basically said, you may want to make some changes. So started making those changes, short, easy changes, but they led to some really good results. So I wanted to bring the lessons that I learned to the White House. This led to our new initiative, Let's Move. Let's Move is a nationwide initiative that basically focuses on four key components. First, we want to improve information and the tools that parents need to make the changes that are desired in their families. The second is that we have to improve the quality of food in our schools. That's where kids are eating many of their meals, and we have to do a better job of making sure that that food is quality. 
Third, we need to improve access and affordability of healthy foods. We have to eliminate food deserts in this country and we need to do it now. And finally, we have to increase physical education for our kids. We need to get them moving. And we're going to be relying a lot on uh, major sports organizations to help us achieve that goal. And we're very excited about that. Let's Move is going to take families out of their isolation and give them the nationwide support that they need in a whole range of industries to get their kids on track to live uh, healthier lives, to eat right, to get more exercise, and to be ready to face the challenges of, of the future.